What is going on guys? Today we're previewing the Dallas Cowboys game at the Seattle Seahawks. And the first thing I want to point out is going to be that Russell Wilson is running an explosive offense and this is not the offense you're used to seeing in Seattle. And that they're not a run first team anymore in my opinion. They they finally put some weapons around Russell Wilson and they're, they're going to be passing the ball a lot. Now, that isn't to say they can't run the ball. I'm not too worried about Chris Carson. Even as bad as, as we have been against the run, or I shouldn't say as bad, as average as we have been against the run, I'm a little more worried about Russell Wilson and, and just on third downs. You saw the game last week in Atlanta, and Matt Ryan had open field on third down, especially the middle of the field, and he even ran for, I'd say he probably had 30-something yards in that game, but I don't have that stat in front of me. Um... If we don't keep a spy on Russell Wilson, we, we could be screwed. So I'm, I'm hoping we definitely play some contained defenses and we, we definitely keep Russell Wilson from scrambling for, you know, 50, 100 yards in the game. We don't want him to have any rushing touchdowns against us. Now, if, if we can stop the run, then we do have some threats to worry about on the outside and DK Metcalf, and we're all familiar with Tyler Lockett. He's been a good core receiver for the Seattle Seahawks for years now. And just a guy that constantly gets open for Russell Wilson. DK Metcalf, on the other hand, is big, strong. He can win some one-on-ones and just a great athlete. And he's kind of starting to have a breakout year for Seattle as a number one receiver. Now, their offensive line is pretty good. And our pass rush has been pretty bad so far this season. Although their interior O-line is a little weak, and, and I think Tristan Hill could be the guy to really take advantage of that. At the same time, Mike Nolan's been talking about Everson Griffin returning to his three-point stance a lot more heading into this week. So that's a big deal, guys. He's, he's used to being in a three-point stance with his hand on the ground and just getting that explosive start to the snap and get to the quarterback faster. And if he can do that, then I, I think that'll make a big difference. And I'm hoping that Demarcus Lawrence is going to be doing some of that too, because that's also where he excels. Man, if you start getting a legitimate pass rush, um, not every down, but often from Demarcus Lawrence and Everson Griffin, then Seattle's got to watch out. Now, as far as Seattle's defense goes, they're not also they're also not the elite defense of years past for the Seattle Seahawks. No, they're still pretty good. They, they got a couple elite weapons and Jamal Adams and Bobby Wagner, who's probably one of the best linebackers in the league. And obviously Jamal Adams is one of the best safeties. But both of those guys really excel in stopping the run. And Seattle's defense is kind of built to stop the run, right? Their pass rushers aren't very exciting whatsoever. Might be one of the worst pass rushing teams in football as far as getting organic pressure. They're going to send plenty of blitzes, especially Jamal Adams. We'll, we'll talk a little more about that. But as far as organic pressure, the best pass rusher, Bruce Irvin, is out for the year with a torn ACL. So that's going to be a big loss for them. And they, they got like Benson Maioa, for I, I, I think it's Maioa from the Raiders. He, he's one of their starting defensive ends now. I think his backup is like Demontre Moore, and he's kind of an NFL journeyman from Texas A&M. I believe he's even played with the Cowboys at one point. He's kind of been everywhere. I, I think he was on the Giants for a while. And, and so they don't have a lot of legitimate pass rushers. Their defensive tackles are Jaron Reed and Puna Ford, and they really excel and stop the run, but they don't get a ton of interior pressure to the quarterback. So... They have really big defensive backs, and they actually have pretty decent speed, but I, I wouldn't say they're great at defensive back. I'd say they're solid, and J Jamal Adams kind of exemplifies that, right? He, he kind of raises that secondary, their, their standards. Um, but like I said, he will be blitzing a lot because his goal is going to be to stop Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. Um as far as tight end play, Dalton, Dalton Schultz and Blake Bell, I, I, I don't know who's going to cover them. If it is Bobby Wagner, then I would assume that they've got him covered. They, they might bring a free safety down. I'm not sure how many looks they're going to get on Sunday, but I, I do know our receivers should absolutely eat because especially if Tyron Smith is back and he's healthy and we move Brandon Knight, who really excelled week two against the Falcons, over to that right side at right tackle, then I think Dak's going to have all day in the pocket 
and he's going to be able to kind of pick apart those Seahawks defensive backs. And I think C.D. Lamb is going to eat, and he's going to make them pay with his speed. And I think Amari Cooper is going to do his thing as well. And don't be surprised if we take some deep shots to Michael Gallup. Hopefully not when Jamal Adams is lurking back there. But we, we do know, and I want to point something out. I, I was watching the Law Nation show, and he had David Hellman on, one of the Dallas Cowboys writers, um, which great interview. Go watch that video if you haven't already. And Hellman was kind of talking about Jamal Adams isn't a Earl Thomas. He doesn't expect that Dak Prescott's going to throw two picks to him. I think the last time we played Jamal Adams, we, th we threw one interception. But what Jamal Adams does bring to the table is he is elite at getting pressure and stopping the run. He's going to be blitzing from different angles and stuff like that. So he definitely brings his own kind of flair to the game and, and is one of the great safeties of the league, obviously, and something we definitely got to worry about. Now, today, I don't think I'm going to be making any predictions um, I, 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 do, I, I, do, I, I do think I'm going to predict a Dallas win, but I don't think I'm going to give you a score. It, it's just really hard to tell. I, I do think if we are going to win, that it is necessary that we control the clock and that Ezekiel Elliott goes out there and does his thing. Um, I, I said in the, one of the last videos about the three keys we need to do. One of the things was protect Dak Prescott, which I think we'll do a good job of doing that. Um, we definitely should. One of the other things was Ezekiel Elliott needs to get to 100 yards. And 100 yards is just kind of a number, right? It, he might have, he, like he, last week, he had 88 yards, and it was enough because we were able to establish the run game, even though he had the two big fumbles in the first quarter. We have to avoid that. Another key, avoid turning the ball over. But we're able to keep running even when we're down by a lot of points. Um, and, and it really helped us. That, that was a big part of why we were able to come back in that game. So I, I think Ezekiel Elliott needs to go out there and do his thing, and hopefully the line can protect for him. Um, hopefully we can snuff out when uh, when Jamal Adams is blitzing. And I think if we can control the clock and we can limit the Seahawks' explosive plays, then we'll definitely um, come out with a win. Now, I said I wouldn't predict, but I, I think it's only fair that I do predict because I, I've laid out the game plan to beat them. And so I would think it would have to be a fairly low-scoring game. I also My first key to success was that we hold Russell Wilson under three touchdowns in the air. And so I'll give him two for sure. So we'll say 14. Uh, I'm going to give them one rushing touchdown. 21, maybe a field goal. 24 to... I'm thinking 28-31. I, I, I'll give you that. 24 to 28 or 31 are, are my my guesses. So, guys, do me a favor. Leave me your comments. I, I, know, I know you're a little concerned about this game. Cowboys Nation is, is very concerned about this game, actually. And, and so am I. And one of the main reasons is just injuries. Now we know we're going to be without Chidobe Awuzie on Sunday, who's one of our starting defensive backs. Anthony Brown is already out. And, guys, that sucks. Um, there's no doubt about it. We do still have Jordan Lewis, and we do still have Trayvon Diggs, although he has missed practice with a shoulder injury as well this week, so we don't really know what to expect. If we don't get Trayvon Diggs back for Sunday, then it could be scary, guys, and um, and, and we may not be able to limit Russell Wilson in the passing game, and, and things could change from there. So this is under the assumption that Trayvon Diggs will be healthy and he will be good to go. Who is that third defensive back going to be? I don't know. It, it could be Brandon Carr. I think he'll be playing some safety, some defensive back. And Daryl Worley could also play some safety, some defensive back. But don't be surprised if C.J. Goodwin gets some playing time with him as well because it seems like the Cowboys value what he brings to the table. Um, so I, I wouldn't be shocked if he's even starting on one of the sides. But that's pretty much going to do it for today, guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for some more daily Dallas Cowboys content. Hopefully we'll get that win on Sunday. And until then, I'm out. Peace!